Welcome to this presentation. In this presentation, we will learn about mixing colors using internet resources. The goal for the viewer. To inform you about an easy strategy to aid students learning with the use of online resources. Also, to inform you about some pros and cons of online resources in terms of human computer interaction. The goals for the students. Students in grades K through 3 should start to gain an understanding about colors and their relationships to each other. Students will be introduced to mixing colors to create new colors. These are the New York State standards for the arts that are addressed in this lesson. The online resource that we're going to talk about in this presentation is Curious George Mix and Paint by pbskids.org. Curious George Mix and Paint is an online resource that provides users with a digital painting studio. Users are presented with red, yellow, blue, and white paint tubes and have a choice of different canvases to paint. Users learn at their own pace by testing out the many color combinations. The goal is to fill in the image on the canvas. Here is a screenshot presented of Curious George Mix and Paint. How does it meet educational goals for the students? Students are offered a hands-on interactive painting experience while learning about colors and the relationship to each other. How does it aid in achieving educational goals rather than the goal conforming to the use of technology? The technology used in this lesson can increase students' active learning time by reducing the preparation and cleanup time that it would take to hand out and clean up physical paints. Curious George Mix and Paint can be used individually on a PC or presented to the whole class on an interactive whiteboard. Students can explore and learn at their own pace and take ownership of their learning. How does this tool effect effectively assist goal achievement? Mix and Paint provides students with a trial by error learning experience. Students have an opportunity to make mistakes and learn from their mistakes. Students strategize, test their strategies, and re-strategize as needed for success. Game-based learning can increase student engagement. Human-computer interaction elements. HCI is basically the design elements that have an effect on the usability of a computer product. Design elements can have both positive and negative effects and should be considered when choosing online resources. Online resources or technology enhanced environments for educational use should have attractive screen designs with effective use of color, graphics, and animation. An example of a positive element would be a website that is intended for young students might have less text and easy to use navigation such as buttons shaped like arrows. Negative elements, advertisements that show up on an educational website might distract users from their educational tasks. If advertisements are presented on the online resource, be sure that they are appropriate for the age of the viewer. So now that we've learned a little bit more about human-computer interaction elements, let's take a look at our online resource, Curious George Mix and Paint by PBS Kids, and let's look at some of the pros. Some of the elements that I consider to be pros to this online resource are the age appropriateness, the aesthetics, the controls, the sounds, and the interactive environment. We can see that there's no advertisements showing up on here, which is a great indicator that it's a good educational resource. 
you can tell by the bright colors that it's age appropriate and keep them focused on the learning activity. Now I'm going to hit the refresh button and so that we can see this right from the start because uh, there's some important elements that happen right from the start. Mix and paint. Uh -huh. <laughs> Click the green button to start. So as soon as the page loads up, uh, the students will see you know, a recognizable character, Curious George. Uh, he makes a noise, which I think can engage students. And then I wanted you to notice that this man here said, Click the green button to start. So he could have said play button, but because of the um, age range that this game is intended for, or the users that it's intended for, he referred to it as a green button, which I think is an important element to consider. Uh, students K through three might not be able to read or maybe can't read very well. So it was nice that he referred to it as a color instead of the word. I'm gonna hit play. Um, and I'm going to leave the music on just for a few seconds, just so you can hear the directions. Then I'm going to turn it off. Let's have some fun mixing and painting with George. Click the green arrows to choose a picture. Now I do want to show that when you hover your mouse over the green arrow, he'll repeat the directions, just in case you didn't hear it. Um, again, he referred to them as green arrows. Click the green arrows to choose a picture. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a picture. Click the colored tubes to mix the paint. So he referred to these as green arrows, which is great. It helps you navigate. Um, Students know what arrows are at that age level. Um, so now that we're looking at the interactivity of the game, which I think is another important element. Students aren't just watching a movie or looking at pictures. They're, in, they're actively engaging in this learning experience. They can mix the colors by clicking on these little tubes of paint here. And then once you've mixed a color, your cursor turns into a paintbrush. It is uh, an element of the controls. It's easy to use. I think that if you see a paintbrush, uh, you might understand better that it something has changed to where now it's more interactive. So let's go ahead and click. And you see that it fills in that space. Uh, one of the great things about the controls that is one of the primary reasons I think this is such a great resource is that it allows you to erase. So students can uh, mix and if they make a mistake they can erase their picture and they can also if they make a mistake mixing their colors they can empty their bowl here and start fresh. So if they're trying to make a green, they accidentally made a brown, they can start again. One last um, element that I want to describe is that the directions are audio, which are a pro and a con. Uh, it's a pro because it's very easy to understand. So now that we've talked about a couple of the pros, let's talk about some of the cons. Um, one of the limitations is that all of the directions were given by this man here in audio form. It would be nice if there was some text to go along with the directions. Uh, well, because some users do not have audio capabilities and others may have uh, hearing challenges that prevent them from understanding the directions. So it'd be nice if the audio was reinforced with text directions to apply to all learners. Um, another con, again with text, is that there's no text to reinforce the colors being learned here. It'd be nice if yellow was written on the yellow tube, blue was written on the blue tube, and red was written on the red tube, and so on. 
um, then students could make a connection from color to words. One last uh, design element that I think is a limitation is it would be nice if the color that you chose to paint with was also uh, aided with some sort of audio feature where the man says purple or text shows up to tell you what color you just created. Overall, I think that this is a great resource for students who are trying to uh, learn about the relationships that colors have with each other. Uh, by mixing these paints digitally, it gives the users a nice stress-free way to uh, interact with the colors and not worry about making mistakes because they can just uh, erase or start over. So now that we've talked about the pros and cons, let's talk about how would you uh, do this lesson without the internet resources? Well, teachers could provide their students with red, yellow, blue, and white paint and a picture to color in. And then this lesson can be done um, by teacher instructing students to mix certain colors together. But there's definitely some limitations to where the technology becomes an important tool in the learning process. For instance, students, if they were doing this physically with paints, um, each student would, ha would have a limited amount of paint. Um, to mix and interact with. Once all their paint is used up, the learning ends. So with the digital paints here, you're able to use as much paint as you want, and try as many times as you want, um, and really uh, give students uh, valued learning experience because they can, uh, because of the trial and error. Again, with physical paint, teachers would have to closely monitor the students to reduce the chance of inappropriate use of materials. Um, plus, the cleanup time uh, and the time that it takes to hand out materials is, uh, takes a lot longer than having students sign in and go to a website. Uh, so they, they are able to participate in the active learning experience much longer than if you had them uh, physically mixing the paint inside your class. Yes, you can use this without the internet resources, but you can definitely see why the internet resources um, promote the learning or, or help the learning process. That I hope that from this presentation you understand some of the pros and cons and features to look for uh, when choosing your own uh, internet resources as learning tools in your class. Thank you for viewing this presentation. I hope now that you've learned about human-computer interactions, you can go out and find your own uh, web resources to help aid you in your students' learning experience.